Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's been a beautiful week this week, beautiful weather. We have nine more days before our first light frost. Oh really? It looks like. I didn't see that. Right at the end of our forecast, our 10, 10 day forecast-ish, it says 30 degrees, but we'll see, it might change. It might get a little warmer. Yeah, or That's colder. late. Our average first frost date, I think, is October 4th or 9th, when you Google it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And some websites say it could happen even sooner, like our window was September 15th through, you know, like into October, and here we are, like mid-October, and it's still... Late October. Yeah, it's still I mean, warm. later October. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, so it's been beautiful, it feels like a gift. I mean, the flowers are still going. We we're able to enjoy fall color a lot longer. Yeah, you know, the only thing is that our maples are not turning red. Or or even, they're not, they're just kind of turning like a little bit of a, there's a brown undertone. I don't like Do you like think it. they're buried too deep? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I mean, we didn't plant them high enough. Since we've been talking about it, I kind of wondered, like... Well, You've been doing everything. I mean, they're getting consistent water. They're getting chelated iron. So they're they're growing and they're yeah, really healthy during the they're season. They're growing, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I was just thinking, think could that be that, like the non-fall color is related to being planted too deep? Oh. Although it wouldn't hurt to to go and dig around and, and just see what's but going on. They're already a little bit in a hole. See, that's the problem with planting at soil level uh -huh. is that like if you plant the hole. If you dig a hole a little bit too deep and like backfill with compost or something mm -hmm. loose, it's like the tree's going to settle. It compacts it It's going to settle a couple yeah. inches. Right. So that's why I think planting it to where you kind of berm it up a little bit. We just launched right into the planting high subject right at the yeah. beginning here. <laughs> I actually meant to mention before we started in on our conversation that we do have long sleeve t-shirts available now in the shop, right? I mean, Ken and Aaron are kind of running the shop, so I don't really... Yeah, Ken's know. running it more than, more than I am. I know that we've got uh, long, -sleeve, long sleeve shirts. And, then and there this was is a something... medium, just so you guys know, like... I'm like a pretty average person, I think. I think there I was uh, sweatshirts too, long sleeve sweatshirts, like not not a hoodie. Uh huh. Oh, so just I like a crew neck. Like a crew sweatshirt. neck. I think so. We need to do zip ups now. Yeah. Like I would. Probably yeah, it's wear going. Those more. It's going a lot slower than we anticipated. Getting what we wanted to do. I mean, like I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I think I have. But one of the reasons we want to start selling stuff ourselves instead of outsourcing it to like Teespring, which is what most creators do on the platform just because it's convenient mm -hmm. um we were getting like as anyone would you'll get an email saying like i didn't get my shirt or it came damaged or you know just normal things that that always happen when you're shipping uh -huh. and i we just felt powerless like we couldn't do anything about it it's like well you know you got to contact teespring and i hate that so now if you have an issue like we'll we can it. just mm -hmm. well yeah and we can also set our own policies which like i feel like are generous mm -hmm. so if you have an issue it's like yeah we'll just send you another shirt mm -hmm. like you know if if it if it came damaged just sorry about that here's another one and we'll just get it out really quick mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about waiting on somebody else to you know well send your damaged shirt back in and once we've verified that it's damaged you right. know we'll send you another one or something like that yeah a so. huge shout out to Natalie too who is Ken's wife and she's been a huge help yeah with the shop and with other things as well so anyway yeah you. we've got more stuff that's coming soon um it's just a little slower than we like thought i don't it would think be. it's a bad thing to start slow yeah you know just add things in slowly as i feel really good though because we're starting to get more more shirts we've got a couple designs that are going to be coming out in the future some of you are gonna love it you've been <laughs> requesting this design for a very long time yeah <laughs> i forgot to mention that we're offering 20% off. On merch. On merch. And it'll go for a couple days. So there you go. Okay, let's jump into the videos from this last week. The first one was antique shopping day with my mom, plus a pretty mini garden tour at one of the shops, which was my favorite part of the whole shopping experience. Um, that one was at LA Junk. They have like this little garden. We actually met the former owner of the shop. She said she had just sold it to the gals who were in like running the shop at the moment. And she was just kind of like wandering around outside. Huh. And she said that she had just sold it and we were just, we were able to talk with her about her garden that she put together up front. So I hope it continues on like that because that for me is a huge draw. Like that makes me feel really good about being there. Yeah. I don't know. Um, anyway, it invites you in. It does. We, we got a lot done that day because we, we actually went to a couple shops I don't think I filmed. We went to a lighting store because, you know, my parents are doing a renovation on their house and it's completely, you know, we see a lot of 
comments, you know, hey, haven't you done a garden tour at your parents? Well, like it's pretty rough right now, not the garden itself, but the whole upper area where the deck is, that is now going to be part of the house. And then the deck's going further out into where the grass area was. So that whole space is just kind of gutted yeah. at the moment. Anyway, we, we went to a couple shops to source some things for that project. And that's always fun too. And my mom and I like to do those sorts of things together because we bounce ideas off each other and we're very similar in taste. So it's really fun that way. Kim Chambers said, I love those purple asters in front of LA Junk. What variety could those be? It's going into my garden next year. Oh, there are a few asters that look like that. And let me look because one of them is like Henry, Henry the third, Henry third, three, I, 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 that could be it. Henry the third, is that how you say it? Um, that one is a little short though. Let me look and see other purple aster varieties. I've been out of the aster game i used to know all of the names because we'd carry them in the fall <laughs> let's see purple dome has a pretty one two feet by two feet that could be it anyway that you could google purple aster varieties and take a look at a whole bunch of different kinds but that henry the third just stood out in my brain for some reason Chrissy said, I like when you go antique shopping with your mom. You both try to persuade each other to buy things. I wouldn't need to be told twice. Question, do you ask for permission to film in the stores? Um, the stores that we normally go to, because we've been to all three of the ones that we were there, uh, that we were at that day, um, they are familiar with us. I think some of them even like follow our videos. And um, I've only ever been asked once to turn off our cameras um, when we went into a shop, which was just total shame because the shop was so neat. Um, and that was kind of a weird, that was a weird experience. Yeah. That was during one of our shopping M trips. Most of the time, I mean, like, I feel like owners should just let it play out because the benefit of allowing somebody to film, you know, it's like it can increase the visibility of your store. So it's like, you should just let them do it. If they're starting to be annoying, you know, if like the filmer is like getting people's way and sure and not you know, respectful and not being respectful, or if then they're it's, super ne negative or something somehow, I don't know. I suppose that. I wonder happen. if that's the fear is that that it's negative. Some press. owners think, oh, there, this might be negative press. Sure. But I still think you know, if you've got a store, anybody can come in and write a review. Mm -hmm. I feel like you should just let it play out. I get if it's a you know place like Walmart, they mm -hmm. just have like no cameras policy. Just to give you an idea, the stores that we go into send us gift cards all, all, yeah. often. I mean, they're not like huge gift cards, but they're just like a little thank you. Thank you so much for featuring our shop in your sure. last video or whatever. And they'll send us like a $50 gift card or something really sweet like that, which they completely do not have to do at all. But it's a very... Like but they're doing thing. it because they saw a boost in business. Yeah. So they're just yeah. trying to be thankful. They often, when I go in, well, when we go into those stores, we see a lot of people that have watched our videos mm -hmm. too, like customers. Okay, like, hey, you know. And so we get to meet a lot of uh, you guys who we see out and about, which is fun. But they also tell us, like the shop owners tell us about how many things they've shipped out. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I try, to, I try to do a good job of holding the camera steady and going slow, which it, that's hard when you're trying to kind of cruise through the stores. Um, but you know, we'll sometimes we'll span or scan, scan, we'll move past an item and maybe not even talk about it, but maybe it catches one of your eyes. And so oftentimes they'll get calls and say, hey, in this booth, I saw this, do you still have it? Can you ship it? Um, so I think they see a little boost that way too. So the places we go largely are really amenable mm -hmm. to the idea, which I'm thankful for. Gregory Kent said, can you list the first two antique stores you went to? Are they in Boise? Really liked the second one too. So we went to the Antique World Mall in Boise. We went to LA Junk, also in Boise. And then we went to Enchanting Objects, also in Boise. I think all three of them have Boise um, addresses. Uh, KVPX said, what do these antique stores uh, that have their inventory outside do when it rains and storms? They just leave it out? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think some of them have doors or like flaps that they can take down. Maybe, uh, you know, I've not been there when weather has been like that. So maybe they cover things more than I think. Uh, thankfully, that's not a huge worry in mm -hmm. our area. So it doesn't happen super often. Jane said, I'd like one of those pole pruners. <laughs> How can I order one from Andrews? Just contact them. Um, you can email them from the website or call the store and they will help you my mom was showing that it's like a do it yeah. brand it has an s kind right. of like it on the end so you can pull branches down and like either pick fruit or prune things it seems like um <laughs> yeah 
when I saw that, I was like, it doesn't... Why use one tool when you could use two? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my mom is uh, ever the saleswoman. Yeah. She's really good at, at uh, defending her position with yeah. her, her things. And it is a nice looking tool. Yeah. Like defending her position. Remember uh, where she wanted to put a cut flower garden? Oh. <laughs> yeah. She had this spot that was... Uh, <laughs> She's going to, I'm going to hear, about, these, I'll hear so, about this later. Yeah. <laughs> she had this spot that was like, in my mind, like a five by eight space or something like that. Uh-huh. Like tiny. So to call it a cut flower garden also is like. You just plant things. You can do it one in a container, Aaron. I suppose. But maybe just like, don't call it a cut flower garden. Because I think that elicits like a different, you know, thought. Like people think of like a, a whole row of something. I don't think that's necessarily true. But anyway, it was, that's it was not also, the point. It was also under a tree. That, well, that was more the point. It was yeah. a little bit shaded. Yeah, a little bit shaded. Well, when you guys were trying to say, it gets full sun for, for like two hours of the day, it gets full sun. I was like, yeah, that's shade. <laughs> <laughs> we will fight it to the death, Erin. Um, Judy said, do you ever shop at Goodwill or Salvation Army? I really enjoyed shopping with uh, my mother. Miss those times. You know, we used to all the time and we just haven't gone... You used to that go much. a lot yeah. in the early days of being married. I still have some furniture that I picked up Yeah, um, at the Salvation Army. I remember a lot of our trips to Boise, just like fun days where we uh-huh. were just killing time or just you know spending the day doing whatever. Mm-hmm. You always wanted to stop at Salvation Army's. Yeah. Or, uh, what is it? Idaho Youth Ranch? Yeah. A, oh, I think I just spit. Did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. My bad. <laughs> you know, I, at this point... Even antique shopping, I have to be in the mood. It's not something that I like to do all the time. Um, so the mood has to strike both my mom and I at the right time for a shopping trip like that to ha- happen. I'm in the mood all the time to shop for plants, to go mm-hmm. to garden centers, to go to go look at gardens. I am always in the mood to do that. I, my focus has kind of shifted a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm more, uh, I've k- kind of reached this point where I'm like trying to get rid of stuff instead of bringing in stuff, if that makes sense, sure, you yeah. know, um, or I have to really love something to, to bring it in or to, to well, okay. So when we first moved into our house, that was like 1500 square feet. Mm-hmm. Well, that was our first house that we bought. It yeah. was like 1500 square feet mm-hmm. and we were upgrading from our rental, which was like a thousand mm-hmm. or 900 or something like that. And so you were trying to fill, you know, yeah. like the cheapest way to fill space is like, well, you know, secondhand stuff. A lot of times you can find some really unique things, you know, yeah. and really neat pieces. Yeah. And then we moved from this house. So we stayed there for a long time. What, like uh, seven or eight years? Over eight years, I think. Wasn't yeah. It? it was a long Maybe time. Maybe it was eight years. <clears throat> Saving up. Yeah. Moved into this house, which was considerably larger. And then we kind of ran into that same thing where it's like, well, you got you have a lot yeah. of space to fill up. And we up. have no money left over to buy. Anything. And there was no money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was nip and tuck for a little bit. It really was. I'm thankful we made the leap, though. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Judgment Not said, the parking lot is empty. Did they open just for GA? <laughs> no. Um, they had just opened, like, a minute before we got there. We timed it just right. Uh, they started getting busier and busier while we were there. Uh, in fact, there were a couple of aisles that we waited to go down because, you know, I don't like to make people feel uncomfortable with the camera. Um, so we'd wait till they like, got through the aisle and we didn't rush anybody. And then we would go down the aisle when it was clear. Around the holidays, it's especially busy, but it feels really festive. Uh, Anne Burquist said, this was such a super fun video to start the day, but wait a minute. Earn Lane, Basket Lane, when did these garden answer thrifting rules begin? <laughs> We've always had a little bit of a, a rule system. When we go shopping, because my mom and I have very similar taste, we always try to state what we're looking for that day. Because, like, I, my mom is looking for chandeliers. I also need a chandelier for over our dining table because the one we have above it is broken. Oh, yeah, right. But I'm not getting in that lane until my mom finds what she wants. And Mm. then I'll look for a chandelier. Ours is fine. It's just, like, one of the arms. It's, like, one of those type that has glass all the way down the arms. And uh, one of them broke. So and the it's cord, just, like the, the wire is in the arm, yeah. right? And so it's, it's still there. It still works. It's just, it's just like cracked. So it's just kind of like leaning to the side. So yeah, she's in the chandelier lane. I am not in that lane because we both are looking for one over a dining room table. So I'll wait. Um, and then, yeah, so we just try to do that so that you kind of respect the other person's thing. So you're not feeling like, no, you can buy it. No, you can buy it. Sure. You know, um, it works out well. It's like calling shotgun. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Whoever gets dibs first. Yeah. 
Okay, next video was decorating the flower shed for fall. I had a couple of aqua pots. They were the uh, style Chicago, mm -hmm. right? Um, in a charcoal gray color, they're really pretty. And it's kind of perfect because they are the self-watering insert things. Um, and we don't have our drip system set up around the, the uh, flower shed yet. And it's kind of perfect. Which we need to do. We really do because I already have two pots out there. But the fact that we already have two pots that are watered right now and maybe like a bi-weekly I think we've just been waiting basis. for you to come up with like an actual uh, plan know. for what you want to, to do I just, there. I kind of want it just to, I want it to look more... Cottagey? Yeah, and like not planted on purpose in a way. Mm. It will be planted on purpose, but like I want the plants just to like integrate with the grass. Like oh, I want huh. it to be like we're kind of mowing the grass right along. Like there's not a distinct flower bed line. But isn't that going to be really messy because the grass is going to want to grow up in the plants? Maybe. Like you're going to have to set a distinction. Maybe. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> see. I have a, I have a there's, vision. There's a line between like whimsical and it just doesn't work. You know yeah. what I mean? And you have to find that balance somewhere. You remember Ron and Suzanne's house though? This is a people that I grew up with and we spent a lot of holidays. My parents, they owned a flower shop in town and my mom worked for them for a while and we spent more holidays with them than we did with extended family. They were amazing people. Anyway, their home had kind of that like... Wild It appearance. had like that, but um, they had daisies come up in their grass. Yeah. And it was just kind of this most magical thing. And Ron did not want to mow the grass until the daisies were done, which I, you know. Yeah. And it did like look like a little bit of a jumble with the grass up with the daisies, but there was something so magical about it too. And they would like mow a grass path through it. Yeah. That's kind of the yeah, feel. Yeah, I do, I do remember that. That's kind of the feel I want for that space. Maybe not that exact thing, sure, but something akin. Are you going to plant more bulbs or just leave the bulbs? No, that I have, you have more bulbs here. Our area. bulbs arrived this week, so we've got twelve crates of bulbs sitting in the bay right behind me. But you're so you're going to plant more in the orchard space, and in front of the flower shed. Yes, not in front of the flower shed, probably. Okay, but in the orchard, yes. Nice. I'll make sure it's mowed shorter, so it's easier to plant. Perfect. Also, it's going to need to be short going into next spring yes because we've got short bulbs that will yeah. come up okay yeah. anyway corn stalks pumpkins those two planters which we found some beautiful perennials mostly to put in those containers which is fun uh user said i have a chance to take my large geranium to a greenhouse would i need to cut it down any suggestions uh, you could if you kind of want to like tame the growth a little bit but you could just pot it how it is and take it into a greenhouse and it should thrive throughout the winter i'm going to do that with some of mine that are out in the garden uh, Tanya said, what size are, or Tanya, 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 I know a Tanya and a Tanya. Yeah. So I don't know how you pronounce it. What size are the terracotta pots outside of the potting shed with the cone boxwoods? Are they aqua pots too? Those are not aqua pots. Those are just like straight up terracotta. And I want to say the opening is maybe 18 or 20 inches or so. It's the largest rolled rim container I could get. Uh, Cree Bello said, does anyone know what is the color of the shed? It's a custom white color called McKinney White because it's the McKinney and Sons painters who came and painted it for us. And they have a custom white color. The barn is the same color. They're going to paint our house the same color. The chicken coop is that color. It's a good white. It is a good white. I don't know the blend. I don't know. Like they just bring it themselves and, and paint. But it is a good white. I should ask them. I need yeah. like the formula. They, maybe they don't want anybody to know. Maybe not. <laughs> secret. A secret yeah. white. We need to get the house painted. I mean, we do have plans in the future to renovate, but that's probably not going to happen for a while. And it's just like, especially the, what's that called? The black part underneath? Yeah, the, the trim. Yeah. Oh, the trim. <laughs> I thought it's it had bad. a fancier name. Uh, it's bad. It's like peeling. Underneath it is the soffit, but there's the, the roof, trim, soffit, side gotcha. Anyway, yeah, the trim is atrocious. And the two porches need to be scraped completely and redone. Yeah. Okay. Gigi said, the pots are gorgeous, but I would have thought that the ornamental peppers wouldn't survive frost freeze. Will these take a freeze, or are they just going to be there a couple of weeks? Um, they will, let's see, they've been in there for a week. They will at least, they won't, I don't think they'll get taken in the light frost. And I don't even know if we'll actually get that, so we'll see. Uh, I think it's going to take a hard frost, which is 28 or below, to take them. Plus, they're a little protected. They're, you know, tucked up by the, on the north side of that, that building. So I think they'll be all right for a while. They will eventually go. But those pots are so full already. And I've got a few extra little fall things. So if they, if they succumb to it, we can pop a couple of orange pansies in there. And it'll be perfect. 
Uh, Romy said, what do you do for restrooms for your team? <laughs> LOL, just wondering. The house. In the beginning, I remember trying to think of a solution uh -huh. for, for that, but I don't... Yeah. Our house is just like a crazy hub of activity all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. Aaron's Tasty Heritage Shed, what box do you have in the pots at the flower shed and are the pots terracotta? The pots are terracotta and those are winter gem cones, which I don't see very often. Mm. I actually like Green, Green Mountain boxwoods, which you can find, they're plentiful and so are winter gems, but Green Mountains grow naturally in more of a conical shape. Uh, winter gems like grow like a wild shrub. Uh, so yeah, I think you just normally don't see winter gems like that. However, Green Mountains do have better winter color. It's just more, it's like a little bit more dull. They are dull. It's like a season. darker, mm -hmm. dull grain. Mm -hmm. So. Just kind of have to like. Yeah, weigh. you just weigh your options. Mm -hmm. Amanda said, do you intentionally use perennials and containers so you have plants that last longer or can be repurposed, such as now you have plants for use in flower beds? If I can, if it makes sense, yes. I really like that idea. In fact, there are two containers in our greenhouse that I planted when it was too cold outside to move them out. One of them has like a calla lily and a begonia, a hookra, and a euphorbia. And when I did that video, people were like, oh my gosh, you used way too many plants. They're going to suffocate and die. I could show it to you today. It looks amazing yeah. <laughs> today. Yeah, to wait till fall. <laughs> I know, but it's been in a hot greenhouse. Like it could yeah. have exploded with growth, yet... It's fine. I think it, not, not I think, I know. It has to do with the varieties of plants that you're choosing to put in, pla in planters. If I put a Supertunia Vista in one of those, yes, they would have clobbered each other. And sure. like things wouldn't have survived that way. Um, but a lot of times you can put plants together and they'll last at least a full growing season before you need to dismantle them. But I was thinking about doing that. There was another one I put together with a hellebore and a hookera and um, a dianthus and a heather, and they're all still looking beautiful in the greenhouse, but I need to take those apart and get them planted out. Yeah. So that's something on the docket. But yeah, I do love to use perennials. It feels like a... Like a twofer. Yeah. Golf Cart Instruction says, what do you do about the fungus gnats that come in organic soil? I seem to get them pretty bad in each bag, even between brands. Uh, I don't think I've ever had them come in soil. We use Espoma soil exclusively. What about your seed starting mix? Have you ever noticed? No, uh-uh. I've had um, fungus gnats before. It didn't come from the soil though. Hmm. Um, we do have natural, it's GN. Well, I mean, I guess you can't say it didn't come from the soil, right? Like there could be eggs in the right. soil, but I've never like opened a bag and had fungus gnats in soil. Sure. Or, and it only ever happens and it's only happened twice during seed starting when things are really wet mm -hmm. here in the studio. Uh, it hasn't been a huge, huge problem for us. And now that we have the natural, it's something that when I start my seeds and I, you know, things are really saturated in the beginning, I'll just probably start using the natural. It's something that you mix in water just as a preventative to keep it from happening. Once I started using that, it took care of everything. And I tried a whole bunch of other things and the sand on top of the soil, which is a, I thought was working out really well ended up being a complete pain because the sand creates like a crust. Oh. Um, which like fungus gnats are supposed to not like to walk across it and you know can't penetrate it down into the soil where they want to lay their eggs, but it ended up being incredibly hard to water because I couldn't tell. Like what does the soil look oh, like? Is it sure. dry? I can't tell and I do I break the crusty exterior and make access now for the fungus gnats right. to get to the soil. Anyway, yeah, sometimes you get desperate though, like to find any solution. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't want to have to spray anything. So now I have bags of sand. See all those? Yeah. <laughs> down there. I have a bunch of bags of sand down there. I need to do some like cactus gardens or something. Yeah, there you go. Utilize that up. Uh, Vianne Wilson said, when you have a small garden, how do you add lots of plants that you love and still do drifts? In small gardens, it's not as necessary to do drifts. The only reason why I go toward drifts is because when you've got a large space, if you did one of this and that and this and that, it would just look like a huge, big, jumbly mess. You need to create a big enough amount of it in a large space that your eye can actually rest on it and be like, oh, there's a sedum drift right there. Like I can actually see the plant instead of having, I mean, there's accent plants too. Like we'll use an ornamental grass as an accent plant or, you know, a, a little evergreen and not do a drift of those. But when we're doing perennials, I, for the most part, like to do drifts mm -hmm. just because it creates a more peaceful space. But in a small garden, I just don't think it's as necessary. I think you need to have your anchor pieces for sure, your winter interest structure, and then build from there and then just pick things that you love. 
Elder in Oak Farm said, the flower shed is so beautiful. What are the dimensions of it? I recently bought a 10 by 13 that I'm going to be turning into a flower farm stand for selling my flowers and vegetables. Mine is pretty close to that. Ours is a 12 by 18. It was just under it the limit like, to where you did like didn't need a certain permit or yeah. something. It was like two square feet under or something. The guy the that helped us build it um, is a inspector. inspector. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so he knows the yeah he, <laughs> he knows, knows he knows the he rules. Can get around. Yeah, so it's so nice to know somebody who knows like the like well if you just do it mm-hmm. like this you don't need permission right because I would have probably initially said fifteen by twenty. Like, let's just round the numbers. Mm-hmm. But um, he, yeah, he said, well, that's just going to be over your square footage. And anyway, out there in the South Garden, we have to be very uh, specific about where things go because it is part of its county, but it's part of the urban growth development. Like, it's slated that mm-hmm. for the city. So, like, it's, there's a shadow plat, plat map. Yeah, there's limitations on yeah. what you can yeah. do. Like, there's imaginary lines. Like, if somebody was going to subdivide it, we know exactly how it would look, where all the homes would be on that space. Um, anyway. Next video, is it too late in the fall to plant? Nope. Definitely not this year. I mean, things are... I'm trimming boxwoods. Like, this yeah. is perfect boxwood trimming weather. Yeah. It's just amazing. And, you know... The professionals say that you want to get things in the ground six weeks before your first hard frost, which is 28 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, uh, so that plants have a chance to root in. And definitely that's the less risky thing to do. You know, plants have a chance to settle. They're a little bit more established before cold comes. But we keep planting until we can't dig a hole anymore. I think as long as you keep it moist, which is something that you have to kind of keep at the forefront of your brain in the fall and winter because it's cold. You don't think anything really needs water because none of your established stuff needs it. But newly planted stuff still needs it if it's super windy or you have a dry spell, you gotta go throw some water on it. So you kind of have to weigh, like, do you wanna think about that? Do you wanna have to worry about it? Um, we do. Yeah. We like, we like to be able to just keep on going. Javier said, I can't get Biotone anywhere, not even Amazon. Any suggestions? Wow. You know, um, that's been something that I've been thinking we should sell on our store, just like smaller bags, because I think it'd be difficult to to ship larger bags. But um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, if nobody else is doing that, find a garden center. I mean, have you checked their website? Is there a locator? Mm Mm-hmm. There's a store locator. Okay. What did they say where they're from? Nope. Oh. Yeah, check the locator. Maybe there's somewhere nearby that you don't yeah. know about. They also have a list of online sources too, but hmm. yeah. Maybe it's just too hard to ship or something. That would be a tricky one, I'd imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could sell the small bags though, probably, and ship those fairly easily, I think. Sure. You just knocked the um, thing behind you, and that would bother you watching the rest of the recap <laughs> with a cockeyed sound. What is that? A like sound a, absorber yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay, next one. Hillary said, uh, your videos, particularly the way you approach your videos, is making me want to become a much better gardener. Yes. Um, I'm wondering about the pruning of the limelight hydrangea. We have a couple which are quite leggy and kind of falling over. Teach me, please. So we uh, harvest, we prune ours in the early spring. So usually you can wait until they start to bud out a little bit. You can see little green like knobs on the branches. That way you can locate which branches are dead, remove all of those, anything that's broken, remove that, and then go in and remove anything weak or like just, cause they, they produce like big thick branches and then also a bunch of little wispy ones inside. I usually go through and remove all the wispy ones because those will still try to bloom and it just takes energy away from the stronger stuff. And then you wanna take your whole plant down by about a third, uh, keep that nice strong wood base at the bottom. But you can, if you see it start to bud out, you can find the first set of really strong looking buds and cut it right above that. And then just kind of create your shape from that kind of first cut. That's what I do. You did a pretty good video this spring, I think. Was it this spring? Yeah, and then I wanna say like, Four or five years ago, you hmm. did another one. Gotcha. Maybe we could link that. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a good idea. I need to do that with our limelight primes. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna really do a hack job on them this year. Really? Because well, you saw. I mean, everybody <laughs> saw. Um, I think with the the shape of them, and maybe it was this video. Yeah, I think it was this one. I planted the limelight primes mm-hmm. and showed you how they looked after a rainstorm, and the they just couldn't hold up because there were so many blooms and I left so many of those little wispy branches in the interior of the plant that they were beautiful until they were subjected to some adversity and then they just, 
I fell. Yeah. So I need to get rid of all those weaker branches and keep all the big good yeah. stuff. Uh, Janet said, whatever happened to the magnolia tree you purchased not this summer, but the summer prior? Did it ever get planted or did it go the way of the dodo bird? It went the way of the, it sat behind the greenhouse. I could not figure out where to put it. Like the more and more I looked at it, the more and more I didn't like it. Like, well, they, they get kind of messy. They do. And they're just, they have the look of kind of like a, like a rubber tree, like a house plant, ficus. Mm -hmm. I don't really want that look out in my garden so much. Um, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. And I thought, should I put it in a container? And then I think it stayed too wet. And then it eventually went. So I'll just be ordering my magnolia branches like normal, <laughs> like I normally do to use in holiday arrangements. That's the reason why I wanted to plant it. So, cause I could, so I could cut on it. And maybe one day we'll have a space to pop one and maybe on the, in that new border we're creating. Yeah. We'll see. I think we need to let things grow up and provide a little bit more density and protection for things like that. Sure. To be put in. So like in 20 years? Yeah. Uh, Mindy's you think we'll be doing this in 20 years? Making videos? Yeah. Or gardening? Well, I know we'll be gardening on whatever scale, you know, we're doing it. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, like, do you think that, like, I wonder if anybody will be making videos in 20 years. I don't know. I wonder if everything will just be like holodecks because like AI and stuff, some of the stuff that they're doing, I watched a video, this is kind of off subject, but I watched a video of Adobe Premiere. They had a, a video of a guy like walking down some stairs and then the presenter on stage was like, I think he needs to have a tie. And so they just kind of like draw a circle around this area and they type in like add a tie. And in the video, it adds a tie for the guy walking down. And that's like a program that anybody can has mm -hmm. access to, you know? So like it's going to start with adding a tie and then it's going to be like add a person and then have them say things. And then with AI, they'll be able to just converse and it'll be like completely autonomous. Be interesting. Do you care at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mindy said, speaking of fertilizers, I noticed that holly tone and berry tone from a sponge have the exact same numbers. Yeah, four, three, do. four. Yeah. Also evergreen tone. Yeah. Does this mean they are identical or are there differences between them? Why wouldn't a sponge just make them into one product? Also, do you know if a sponge fertilizers ever expire? I don't think that they expire. And I know that the reason that they do it is that they know that people like to feel confident in what they're buying is going to be good for the thing that they're putting it on. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's easier for them to have two products like, say, you know, Berry Tone. This mm -hmm. is good for berries. But people may not make the connection that it's also good for, you know, hydrangeas and hollies and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why they do it. Sure. Or like evergreens, you know, yeah. it's the same mixture and they know that it's really good for evergreens, but people may not make that connection where it's like, this is a great for evergreens, but they do have different formulas for other things too. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah. Megan said, I'm curious why you haven't any azaleas or rhododendron in your garden for additional spring interest. Do they not do well in your area? They do not personal preference it really no I would probably grow them or try them at least if they did better in our area but they like a lower pH soil and we're really high pH and there's some things I'm just not willing to struggle with you know to get them to produce it's kind of like blueberries we should give it a shot though you think I so I want to give it a shot we should have like an acid area where you plant a couple of those things. Aaron's acid garden. Yeah. You should start that. That can be your series. Okay. Yeah. Work, can we get some from your parents or yeah, maybe they can order some. winners could hook us up. Well, yeah, they've got, cause reason. they've got some, yeah, they've got both. Maybe I'll ask them. Yeah. But maybe your mom could just order them too. That yeah, might be easier. She could. Okay. For sure. Uh, random heart said, I'm so curious about your tempest weather station, wanting to put one in, but waiting to see what you think of it. Are you planning an update video? Yeah, we could. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. We haven't um, had much weather to speak of since. Yeah, it's been put it it's in. like been the same. Like I have been getting, uh, you know, like we were at your brother's house, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I get this little like it's raining at Garden Answer on mm -hmm. my phone, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had a ton of rain, so I can't. We haven't had a lot of wind either. No, we haven't. Just we just haven't had a ton of weather, except mm -hmm. for just like sprinkles. Yeah. So, I can't really. Can't give a I good like review. I like it so far. Can't I think give a good review of it yet. 
Yeah. What I would love is if we had like a really strong storm Mm -hmm. or, well, I don't really want a storm, but I know it will happen. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see like what kind of reports we get back. I do think I saw a rain symbol. Or if we have like a deluge of rain, you know, that's where I want to know, like, was it an inch of rain or was Mm -hmm. it two inches or probably not two inches. I don't even know what two inches would be like. I just got into the weather app. So seven days from now, we're supposed to get a little bit of rain, 40% chance. Okay. Uh, also, the night that said 30 degrees last night, it's now saying 31. So oh. it might creep up. We sure. might not get a, a freeze. <sighs> How weird. How weird if we make it to November. You know, I remember when I had my lawn mowing business, um, there were there was a couple times I mowed almost up until Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah. It wasn't, I mean, that was like the exception, yeah. not the rule. Sure. But, um, but like those were, I was like raking in the money, yeah. like late in the season. Yeah. Like, yes. An extra month of income. Yeah. But if the uh-huh. grass is still growing or if there's leaves on the ground, right. it's like, yeah, mow it up. Got work to do. Uh, Jean Marie said, I love how the pond area is filling out. Also notice the lovely pillows on the Adirondacks. Where did you get them from? Marshalls. I only ever put outdoor pillows that I can get for cheap outside because they just get so gross, you know, so fast. Do you remember how much? Oh, I think they were 20 bucks for the two of them. Oh, that's not Or bad. like twenty four ninety nine. They were in a, uh, like a tie, like together. Sure. So yeah, they were, they were cheap. Some they were of those in... things, if you just think like you're going to replace them every other year or even every year. Every year, 24, 24 99 pillows, I would p- replace once a year. Yeah. Cause that's a lot of, a lot of time you get to use them many months of, you know, we sure. use them every day. We sit out there every yeah, single do. day. I love that we, I mean, we've said this before. We have used that space, like that area of our garden more now than the whole time we've lived here. Yeah. Every night we ask the kids, do you want to fire at the pond or in the fireplace? Yeah. And it's, it goes back and forth. Right. Depends on if yeah, s'mores they, are being they made. Do. They'll pick, they'll pick every other. Yeah. Uh, Jan Windmiller said, do you remember how many superbenas you planted in the drift? It looks incredible. I think it was 80. Yeah. Wasn't it? I did eight flats. I remember in that video you were like, like, I only have a little bit of time this morning, but I thought I would plant this little drift. I, it was and tr- every, all the comments were like, yeah, Laura, just quick 80 plants. No how big long deal. did it take me? 15 minutes? Yeah, not long. It doesn't take very long. When you have the Laura edition auger. Yeah. <laughs> and you Available can, on our website. <laughs> then, I mean, you just whip through it so fast. You just yeah. place, I mean, it's, it's fast. Place your plants. I kick them over or knock them over with the auger, pop my hole in the ground and just knock, knock, knock. You almost don't even need to place the plants. Sometimes like we place the plants so that it looks better for the video. But Mm -hmm. I know that there's sometimes where you know where it needs to go and you could just... Yeah. Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't place them. You just aug the holes. I just did the kale on either end of the Hartley. On the first one, I placed them so that you guys could see how I put them. And then I knocked them over and did the holes. The second side, I just did the holes Mm -hmm. and then put them in and I just throw the plants in. I prepped them all like the second batch. Um, I took them all out of their cans, ripped the bottom of the root ball off because they're so root bound, those big kale. And then I just went over and just like tossed them into the holes (laughs) and then I get down on my knees and do the actual planting. But over the years, you like plants are resilient and they're tough and you know what you can do with them. Right. And I just, yeah, you can kind of like beast your way through a project and get it done really fast and with minimal effort with your body Mm -hmm. to like minimal up and down. Sure. So... Uh, next video was fall plants for the Hartley. That was a fun one. I uh, planted up the containers mm-hmm. and planted all the kale in the four quadrants. It looks really good. So pretty. And I didn't even plan to do all of that. Like the evergreens, I didn't plan to put those in. But I, I knew for winter I wanted to. And I just had told you I was going to go down to the garden center when they got their fresh cut Christmas trees. And I was just going to get four little ones to pop in those containers. But then you have the whole issue of getting them anchored in, anchoring a fresh cut Christmas tree in a pot. I've done it several times. It's so hard to do um, because they always are so heavy. They want to tip the first whiff of wind that you get and it's pretty exposed right there. So I had been eyeballing these Norway spruce and I hadn't picked them up because of <clears throat> you, Erin. Because <laughs> every time I look at a small evergreen, you're like, oh, don't buy the small one. Do they have bigger ones? Yeah. And I, <laughs> well, what's the, what's the mature height? On 80 that by yeah. 20. <laughs> but you want to know something? We have so much space out there in yeah. the new property that we get to use these that look like Christmas trees. They're well anchored in the pots and sure. then we can pop them out and just let them grow and fill yeah. in. And maybe we put them on like kind of by um, the heritage oak toward that side because that already looks like a border, sure. you know, because of all the trees in the background. So you won't see the little 
the little evergreens back there. Norways do pretty well in our area though, and I think they look really pretty. So that was a fun project. And I also trimmed up the boxwoods because we couldn't when we trimmed them earlier because the super tunia Bordeaux had just like, yeah, it was crawling out. I don't think I'm gonna do that next year. I, I love the surefire begonias so much. <clears throat> we need to try that in an area that gets full, full, full sun. Well, like all day sun. Let's do it. As long yeah. as they get enough well, moisture. That's, that's a lot of them to plant. I feel like we need to do one year where we just plant like, you know, 10, no more than 10. Yeah. yeah. Um, because like, I have a feeling that they will burn. I think the only reason why the surefire roses burned in the front section of Versailles, which they did struggle, is because mm-hmm. they weren't getting proper water. You might be right. The, Let's try it. I just, the surefire white. Oh my word. I mean, I was so underwhelmed when we planted those. And yeah. I was kind of like, ooh, we'll see. And it did take them a while to take off. And that has to do, you know, with what size you get them to begin with. And it looks like they were hardly rooted into their cans at that point. They were just newly, like, plugs put into the, the bigger cans. So they were baby plants, like baby babies. But they are so beautiful. And they stay... Taller than the boxwoods now. Yeah, they stay so tidy, though. Like, they don't try to push through plants. They, like, right. sense their space and stay. And they're so... Easy. You don't, don't have to fertilize leggy. them. They get bushy. They don't get leggy. Right. Like super And I kind of love that behind boxwoods especially because you plant your boxwoods to look like a structural piece of the garden. Mm-hmm. When you have your super tunias pushing through and crawling over. Right. And, I mean, there's the place for those kind of plants, but I don't know that that's necessarily the place. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it would be so pretty. And you don't have to deadhead them. You don't have to spray them for budworms. And right. you don't have to fertilize them. Yeah, because they don't want fertilizer. Yeah. I know. So let's just surefire begonias everywhere. Yeah, maybe. Everywhere. And superbenas. Everywhere. Yeah. No spraying with BT. You do, we do fertilize our superbenas, but I don't think they require as much as a super tunia or, or superbell does. Yeah. Superbells did great for us in the ground this yeah. year. And they say, even on the website, like, do not plant these in the ground. They need excellent drainage. They're best for, like, hanging baskets that drain real fast and then dry out. Still, though, I mean, they're small plants. The, but sometimes you don't want a, a vista vigor. You want yeah, something that's more. But petite. just don't expect don't expect the vigor of a super tunia by planting a you know super bells. So the ones that did the best in the ground for us were the new one, super bell smitten pink. I think it's still looking good out there. The pink improved, amazing, and I planted those with the eco pots around them. Those are the only ones I left the pots on, and they did fantastic. And then I did the double twilight it's like a little i think moon i didn't like those twilight. as much i think in but the they, they performed really well yeah i liked them a lot i love that light lavender color super belts might be a good choice back there too if we mm. want something lower i guess it'd be a little underwhelming let's do begonias i think that's yeah we need to update our order yeah because i'm gonna need a little bit more than i thought of those if we do that. Rebecca said, you spend so much time outside. What kind of sunscreen do you use on your face? I have the Skin Medica. It's a tinted moisturizer. I can't remember the SPF. You can get it in two different SPFs, I think. The higher one is a lot more greasy and I don't like that one. It's like a a 35 maybe, or Mm. does that make sense? 35 or 34 or something. Uh, And I like that one quite a lot. Down Sprig Lane said, does Aaron ever think or say that annuals are a waste of money? No. Well, okay. (laughs) I mean, it's our business, so, mm-hmm. you know, it's different. Mm-hmm. I might have a different opinion if, um, if, you know, you were, like, bleeding us dry and that wasn't where we derived our income from. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. I've started some of ours from a seed. So I did floss flowers, the agaratum, this last year. They did beautifully in the container. I did a bunch of our geraniums from seed. Um, I did, what else in containers? What if you did all of our annuals from seed boy would that be a pain in the butt well would you have enough space uh growing to grow space? yeah mm-hmm. really yeah well given the fact that we wouldn't get as big of an annual order and that needed the space in the greenhouse yeah. when it first got here but that doesn't go in the heated space that goes in the non-heated space well yeah if we get it like we did this year that worked out fantastic i think i would have enough space but i'd have to Probably think about what Would I Would you guess. ever want to? I think it would be an interesting challenge. Really? For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might be a total fail of a year. <laughs> but it might be amazing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, a lot of the... It'd be cool because it, it is like accessible, I suppose, to plant seeds. But it's a lot more work. And probably a lot of work that a lot of people don't want to go through. Mm-hmm. They just want to go to the garden center, 
you know, it, that's why garden centers sell flowers because yeah. people don't want to grow their own stuff right. from seed. Um, well, I mean, some do. Timing everything for me, like timing it to where it's all yeah. ready at the time we needed it, but but not starting it too early that you don't need to like repot it a bunch of times, but maybe one time so that you could have a little bit bulkier of a plant before you put it out. I think that's where it would get a little sticky sure. space wise, because when you pot things up out of their seed trays, which you would want to do if you were growing them for your own space, I would want to, cause I'd want a bigger plant to go outside. Then you would need double the amount of space that you started with. Yeah. Or more. If this was like a garden that people came and toured or something, that wouldn't matter as much if you were growing a lot of like bedding plants mm -hmm. from seed, mm -hmm. because then you could just practically plant plugs in the yeah, ground, right. you know, when they're small mm -hmm. and just let them grow up. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, if you're wanting them to look good as you're planting them, yeah. you need to grow them on a bit more. Donna Bauer said, how do the evergreens keep from free freezing in the winter in those pots? They will. I mean, not to death. Yeah. Uh, those Norways, what are they, like a zone three? Or were they a, like a two? Might have been a two. Uh, rule of thumb is to choose plants that you're wanting to overwinter in your containers that are rated two zones lower than your growing zone. So for us, um, gardening in a zone six, we would want to choose things that are zone four or lower. Because it gives you that 20 degree buffer and usually things are fine. They don't die from freezing, they die from drying out most of the time. So I think it's a matter of making sure you're tossing some water in there. Not enough to keep them wet, but just to keep the, keep the roots damp on the damp side. It's amazing how quickly they actually dry out in the winter yeah. around here. Well, we get a lot of wind. Yes, most most of the in years. the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew said, "Do the geraniums come back year after year, or will you have to throw those away?" Uh, geraniums, I do. They they're annual, so you can treat them as an annual. You can pot them up if you've got a sunny windowsill or somewhere where you can winter them over. Some people will winter them like in a garage and keep them lightly moist and then bring them back out and they kind of spring back to life. Uh, I am planning on saving some of the ones around the chicken coop, so I'll be digging those and repotting those and bringing them into the greenhouse, but I've got new seed for next year already. Um, so we'll start some new ones. They're super easy to start from seed. They're one of those satisfying because I don't know why they're little leaves. I mean, the little itty bitty geranium leaves that look so different than everything else that we have started in there. I just, they're fun. They're fun to grow and they're not uh, susceptible to many bugs in my experience. I haven't had them afflicted by much. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like just plant them and make sure they stay moist enough to come up and then they're good to go. Kelly said, when will you stop running drip irrigation? Then how frequently will you water? So we run, well, let's see, <laughs> I'm trying to think. We're getting our lines blown out the middle of November, right? Mm -hmm. We're on Pedro's schedule for that. Um, and you know, it's just play it by ear. He had a I shut him off all the time. Yeah. I mean, um, I've already reduced everything's running at like about 50%, and I'm running them about <clears throat> maybe 50% of the time, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like they're getting like 25% of the water that they would have gotten, you know, when it was 100 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of play it. I, yeah. It's all, I mean, weather related. So if it stays warmer, longer, then we have to run them longer. In our system, you can just set a percentage. So like during the summer, they run at 100%. And then as it starts to cool down, I'll knock it down to like 70% and then 60% mm -hmm. and maybe 50%. And then I'll also, if we ever, if it rains, I just shut the whole system off. Mm -hmm. So nothing gets water if there's been rain. Right. So... There were some things that I planted. When was the last time it rained? It was like a fairly decent amount. It was like a week ago or something. I planted some things right after, and when I got them out of their cans, the root balls were so wet, and so was the ground. I didn't even water them in. Yeah. I just planted them and left them, and they're great out there. It's just one of those things that you have to kind of... Just know that plants want to be damp. They, I mean, like moist. They don't want to be muddy. Soggy. And they don't yeah. want to be like bone dry. So you're trying to find that. Yeah. Through the winter, you know, brand new plants that we put in the ground, we'll splash water on every few weeks and same with containers every two to three weeks. Amy said, I can't remember, what is the standard planted in the center of the four quadrants? Those are sparkling Sprite crab apples. I was standing there last night looking at those trees. Yeah. Just thinking, I love the color of the crab apples in that tree. I think that might be my favorite color of crab apple in terms of crab apple color. Hmm. What, they, what color are they? They're like a golden color. Oh. They're so pretty. They're like, not orange, but and not yellow, but they're just a really warm fall kind mm. of color. They're so pretty. Um, they grow 12 by 12 and they grow in a naturally like a lollipop sort of shape. Uh, we might let them grow to the full 12. We might keep them pruned in more of a circle kind of shape. 
Uh, I don't know. I love What's them. the bush that um, there used to be a lot more of in this area that had orange little berries? Oh, pyracantha? Yeah. Yeah. How, does, like do people orange. not plant that anymore? They have wicked thorns. Oh. Mm-hmm. They're gorgeous, but they do have wicked thorns. As Barlow said, will you leave the kale in the beds over the winter? Yes, we will. They hold up to cold really well. So they, they'll look like if it gets really cold and we get a ton of moisture, they'll start looking sad, but they'll look good for a good portion of the winter. I think. Kim said, I love that kale in the quadrants. Love the coral queen. If you start this from seed, when would you start it for fall planting? I, you know, I would have to read the growing instructions on the kale because there's specific temperatures that you have to germ them at and then grow them on at. And I don't know that we have anything conducive to that at the hot part of the summer because they're a cool season crop. I mean, I would have to start them in here, but even here, I think it's too warm hmm. in this room. Um, I think I would have to read it again, but it, I want to say like high 50s, 60s, somewhere in there is kind of where it wants to grow on. So I would have a much better time of it growing them for spring planting, but they just don't seem like a spring plant to me. Sure. Jennifer said those ornamental kale look gorgeous. The one I got was eaten by cabbage mothworms. Do you use BT to handle that? I would like to plant more next year. Yeah. On normal cabbage, like the cabbage that we eat, we have spray, like the ones we had this year, we did spray them like once or twice with BT. Um, they still had a little bit of caterpillar damage, but not bad, not bad enough that we couldn't you know, peel those leaves off and still eat the cabbage. I haven't ever had it be a problem on ornamental cabbage before. And maybe that's because I'm always planting it in the fall when it's colder and maybe that activity has subsided by that point. So, I mean, you could spray them with BT and it's definitely the most benign choice of anything because it just targets the caterpillar. Um, it won't hurt other pollinators, things like that. So if you have that problem, BT is definitely the way to go. It's kind of hard to get that BT to adhere to the cabbage leaves though. You'll notice it'll like beat up and roll off. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd want to use a surfactant of some kind, a sticker with it. I've never done that before. Uh, Nellie Hedrick said, your weeping willow tree is gorgeous. Was it there when you bought the property? Yes. We have two weeping willows, one here in front of the barn, kind of greenhouse area, and then one by Hebe, by the Hartley. And yeah, they are beautiful. There was one other one in the kind mm -hmm. of behind where the pond is now. And it was always sick. Remember? There it was, was two over there. There was two? Yeah. Remember there was one by the barn here? And then there was oh, one on the other side. Oh, that was a Scarlet Curls Oh, willow. you're right. You're right. And that one was beautiful, but it was... Like Defoliated a, every year. Def from spider mites. It would get so loaded with spider mites that it would just, yeah, lose all of its leaves in the middle of the summer. And I would never spray it because it was so huge. And I didn't want to spray something that would kill spider mites that big and like everywhere in the air. Yeah. It just felt wrong. So we took it out. Um, now we don't have that worry, which is really nice. And then that other weeping willow was always... It was always losing big branches and it always uh, got black tips. All the leaves got black tips mm -hmm. and then it would start to defoliate. I didn't notice a spider mite problem on it though. Probably had boar damage, I'm guessing. Yeah. And this is our last video from this past week. It was a uh, last pepper harvest of the season, planting the North Pole arbs that Aaron picked up and then more kale for the Hartley. I planted the white kale at the end, either end of the Hartley. So yeah, pepper harvest, it was big. We mm -hmm. had a lot of peppers, but that area is cleaned up now and the water's off to that section now. Um, it feels good to like slowly kind of like tuck, not tuck, tuck up. Tuck things in? Uh, uh, what, what am I looking for? I don't know. I'm losing all the words today. Button up. Button up. Mm, button up, like little areas of the garden, just a little bit at a time. Uh, Tina Shockley said, have you thought of painting the electrical to match your brick on the Hartley? Faux brick painted. You know, I see that suggestion a lot. I can't imagine it looking good. Right. Faux painted. I've never seen a faux painted Unless you brick. had like an artist do it. But in that case, right... like wouldn't it wear and you'd get wet, like weathered yeah. looking paint and that would almost look worse. Just try to cover it with something. Yeah. I thought about making like some willow, like real pretty willow or... Yeah. Like, like a fencing sort of situation just around it somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We might experiment with some things. It is too bad. It's like you don't know until you get into it. Well, I didn't. I had the option of putting it around the side, kind of where the bench is, which mm -hmm. hindsight, that might have been a better area because it's tucked around the corner. But I just, I stood behind it and, you know, you could see the door and I could see that where the benches were going to be. And I thought, I don't want to see it, an electrical panel, mm -hmm. because when I'm looking at this thing or when you're driving by it, that's what you'll see. Mm -hmm. And that probably would have driven me crazy right there. So I thought, well, this end will probably be the least, probably the other end would have been better. It just wasn't, uh, we would have 
this end was closer to where the electrician electrical was coming from. Yeah. So it made that the most part made sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll bet that you'll find something to cover it and you'll be happy. I hope so. I mean, I'm not unhappy. Right. I look, I see it every day and I'm, I don't even think about it at this point. You know, you kind of just stop seeing things like that. JWS said, do you ever have problem with sun scald on the young tree trunks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about wrapping them? No, I never have. I don't like the look of, you know, whenever I go places and they've like painted or wrapped or, or whatever, I, it kind of always bothers me a little bit, but maybe it's good for the health of the tree. I don't know. Thankfully, it's not a huge problem. We don't see it on a lot of things. We just have see it, see it occasionally. Yeah. Uh, Nancy said, aren't you afraid that trimming your box with this, boxwoods this late in the season might be bad for them? Not with our weather. Not at all. How long do you think they need to recover before a frost? Oh, I'd give them a week, 10 days, something like that. And it's a bigger deal if you're cutting into an established shrub where you're like taking it down mm -hmm. to where it's like exposing stuff that has never seen sunlight, you know, for a while. With this, it's like a little itty bitty growth on the sides and the top that's already exposed to all the elements, mm -hmm. you know, already. So I'm not super worried about the baby boxwoods. Uh, Star Mountain Garden said, how do you plan to choke out the grass and weeds in the area or does the mulch do that for you in the North Pole area? Mulch helps. Yeah. Um, you know, Paul and Bethany go around with a hula ho, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you go around and you like get the roots when they're small, it's not, it's not nearly as much work right. later in the season. It's like kind it's of relaxing kind of work. spring and fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cause you don't have to bend over and you just right. kind of like chop, 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 walk right. around and enjoy the, you know, the weather. And... and you don't really need to do anything with the seeds or with the, see, um, the weeds. Yeah. They just drive and go away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're small. Yeah. But the second, like if you miss it and they've already gotten a couple feet tall. Then it's harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're screwed. Like the weeds that you saw next to the pepper plants. Tony Rice said, how do you preserve peppers? Just freeze? We made cowboy candy one year, which is like kind of a hot pepper jam, like relish, sweet. If there's a sweetness to it. It's real, really yummy. I'm um, freezing them. Yes. Uh, boy, I don't, I've never preserved them in any other way. I give away all the peppers that I picked that day. So I'm not doing anything with those. I'm, I'm done. I'm over, I'm over it with the produce. We'll eat some stuff fresh, but I'm not going to preserve anything else this year other than our squash. Um, Paul and Bethany have been working on harvesting all the rest of the stuff that was, I didn't harvest the first time around because it wasn't ripe yet. Um, so they've been like going through because they wanted to give the, the vine, the vines go to Bethany's pigs. Um, and then everything that we have, that's like a good cooking type squash or pumpkin will go in the root cellar. So I'm preserving by the way of root cellaring things at this point. Uh, Jen said in a previous video said it's too warm to plant tulip bulbs. Just wondering what is too warm overnight temps, daytime temps or both. It's not, I mean, at this point, like, okay, so today's supposed to be 75, 77, 75, 76, 72, 70, <laughs> beautiful weather on our forecast. And then it goes 63, 57, 53, 53. I'm not planning on planting any bulbs this week. Anyway, it'll start in next week. So we'll hit the cooler temps. I probably wouldn't plant them if you're in the high 70s and 80s still. Um, I'd probably wait till it's like consistently like in the 60s, 50s, that sort of area. I don't know what the cutoff is on that. But we didn't even get ours until two days ago, so. Pretty good timing though. It really was. Last question from user said, I'm curious, why not save your favorite pepper varieties by overwintering the entire plant? You would get a jump on the next season and not have to start over every year with seeds. This year, I didn't plant any of mine from seed. I got all them all as starts from the garden center, which is fun. I like to go down there and I kind of missed that a little bit, like going down and looking at all the varieties and picking out the ones that you want. Uh, when you do that though, you are subject to whatever they have. You know, you when you grow start them from seed, then you can pick out exactly what varieties you want to try. Some year I might be in the mood to winter over some pepper plants, but it's not really high on my priority list of things that I want to, you know, mm -hmm. have in the greenhouse. So yeah, I kind of like to start fresh sometimes. This next year, I told Aaron this, we'll see if I can stick to it, but I want to like reduce the amount of everything that <laughs> we're growing and maybe have everything in the cut flower garden next year. Yeah. We'll see. You just we'll limited see. yourself because of the rose garden. <laughs> That's a whole quadrant you can't use now. No, I can't. 
however, I was thinking, I was looking at the end of it. I'm like, I still have quite, a, there's still quite a number of holes in the rose garden. And there's one kind of corner that doesn't have any roses yet. I thought I could put my tomatoes there. Next oh, year. don't do that. <laughs> That's the, oh. I knew that would make him want to die inside just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I won't, I won't. Oh, I'd hyperventilate if you did that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There are, I won't do that, I promise. Okay, thank you. There are a few roses, though, that I know I want to get rid of. We walked through it last yeah, night. Yeah, And not that I don't like the rose, not get rid of, but move out of the rose garden and put something else in that has more cuttable. Well, I think you should always uh, have that as kind of like a revolving door. Mm -hmm. Like, you should be pitching the roses or moving out the mm -hmm. ones that you, that don't perform or you don't like? Well, there's one called like Lida Rose, Lida Rose, it's L-Y-D-A, and it's gorgeous. They come out like the big stem and then it's just big poofs of blooms and they're singles and they're kind of white with a little lavender tinge to them. And uh, to get a stem though, that has multiple blooms on it and not just a bunch of buds and a few blooms, you have to wait a little while and they, they come so sporadically that you n there's never a good time to harvest the stem. Yeah, and it. they also, to me, it kind of almost, Okay, like if you were, if I was just to look at it quickly, I would say it kind of almost has like a mountain hydrangea sort of a like bloom to it rather mm. than a rosette, like what yeah. you would think of as a rose. It's just more open and sparse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that one, I love the rose. So we'll keep the rose. We'll just move it out of the cut flower garden because it's not really a good cut flower. And that's yeah. kind of what the whole point is. There's a few out there though. Oh my gosh. Winter sunset. Betty White. Uh, the Tchaikovsky. Um... Edith, Edith's, I can't say either word, Edith. Edith's Darling, uh, Life of the Party. Uh, what are some of the other ones? Sweet Mademoiselle. Of course, all the David Austins look gorgeous. I planted like James Galway, Whistley, uh, Windermere, uh, Wollerton Old Hall, Charles Darwin. Those are all gorgeous. Uh, Coco Loco, Distant Drums. There's some, <laughs> such pretty ones out there. Samantha and Benjamin and I were going through smelling them last night. Yeah. It's fun. You guys, that is it for today's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.